Hey again guys, thank you for joining me on this next video. I today am talking about what it means to be a trad wife. So, I have been watching and been YouTube has been suggesting these videos about trad wifery or people who are trad wives or believe in like this traditional form of wife. And um, there's been a lot of accusations about things like white supremacy or you're just a doormat or any of those things. And none of that to me says trad wife. None of it does. So I just wanted to go and say what trad wife is to me, what it is to Christianity, put a, put a more... Um, exacting face on what it actually is like when you say trad wife to me i think proverbs 31. i'm not thinking about like american traditional stuff which is sort of based in proverbs 31 but a lot of it some of it i should say not really so let's go into this okay so proverbs 31 starts out like this um an excellent wife who can find she is far more precious than jewels that sounds great, right? If you're an excellent wife or that's what you're working towards, then you're more precious than jewels, right? And Proverbs 31 really breaks down this someone that is more precious than jewels, this wife. She is a hardworking business owner. Now, I don't want you to get it twisted. This is kind of where it's different from the world, where a business owner means something she works at from her home. Or, for example, something she can do and her kids can come with her, okay? Or her husband can find her wherever he, he needs to find her, things like that. So verse 13, 14, 15, 16, basically 13 through 19 is all about hard work and the kinds of work that she does, okay? So let's just read that right quick. 13, she seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. She's like the ships of the merchant. She brings her food from afar. She rises while it's yet night and provides food for her household and portions for her maidens. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. She dresses herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable. Her lamp does not go out at night. She puts her hands to the distaff and her hands hold the spindle. Let's see, that's to 19. So she's working, whether it be in the household or outside of it, as far as planting. So planting a vineyard takes about, depending on the size of the vineyard, right? Can take anywhere from a day to a week, but then all you have to do is wait for it to grow. You do have to do some watering. You do have to do some basic maintenance, but a lot of, um, a lot of farming, especially if you're just doing it for like your family and so on this smaller scale, there isn't a whole lot of work. There's an initial work phase and then you just wait. So she's not doing things that take her away from her family, her children at home, things like that. But she does have um, a business that she runs on her own. Okay. Or maybe her husband helps, but she's definitely involved in work of some kind. She's a giver, and that's in verse 20. She opens her hand to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. So she's not someone who doesn't consider those who are below her or those who are poor or have less than she does. She is someone who considers those people, okay? So far, so good, right? Okay, she's a planner or she's forward thinking. So she's future thinking. That's verse 16. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. You when, she, you, when you plant anything, you don't get the results right away. This is something you have to look at and think ahead. Well, I'll be able to plant this. And in six months, sometimes a year, sometimes three months, sometimes two, it's just, it's not right away. I will get the reward from it. So that's future thinking, right? Verse 21 shows it also. She is not afraid of snow for her household, for all her household are clothed in scarlet. Okay, so she knows that nothing's going to happen to her house because she's been, she's prepared. They have clothes for it. Clothed in scarlet can just mean that they have clothes that are 
rich, I guess, but not rich in the idea of like, they cost a thousand dollars. It's more like rich in that they last, they're durable, they have, they're going to protect them from the elements. Okay. So that's what that means. And then 25, I have notes, of course, <laughs> strength and dignity are her clothing and she laughs at the time to come. The only reason why you can have the only reason why you can laugh at the times to come is because you know you're prepared. So again, future thinking. That's why she can just laugh at it. She has trust in God. She knows that she's done everything she can do to prepare for it. And her family's not going to have need or be in need because she's done everything she can do to make sure they have what they need. She has a good reputation. And for me, that's verse 23, all right? Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. The only way a husband is able to go out and do what he needs to do as far as sit with the elders, know what's going on in the world, like he needs to do that to protect his family. He needs to do that to make sure society is going, you know, the way God wants it to for his children, right? And for like his friend's children, like he needs to do that. But in order for him to do that, he has to know that when he leaves the home, everything's going to be fine. Everything's going to be taken care of and he doesn't have to worry about it. So that's why I say she has a good reputation. He knows, everybody knows that whenever he goes out to do what he needs to do, then everything's going to be fine. He knows that. That's her reputation. That's how she acts, etc. She is godly. So verse 30, charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. So at the top, it's saying that this is the one, this is the kind of woman that we are praising. So she gets the recognition um, from her husband because she is godly, not because she exists as a woman, not because of really anything that per se she's done, but because she's working in a godly way. Okay. It's not because like she went out and got the best vineyard or whatever. It's because her focus is the family. Her focus is making sure God is honored through that family. So that is, that's why her husband and everyone will say that she, um, poo is to be praised. Okay. Because she believes because she's working with God, she's trusted and that's verses 11 through 12. The heart of her husband trusts in her and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. So she's watching out for her husband. She's watching out for her household. He trusts in her because she's honest um, and they are working together as a team towards their goals. That's the only way you can trust in somebody and have no lack of gain and know and, you know, be somebody who is doing the husband good and not harmful all the time, right? So she's trusted. She's educated and invests. So that's verse 11. The heart of her husband trusts in her and he will have no lack of gain. Um, the only way that he can trust her to do what to do is that she's educated in it. 13, she seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. So she knows how to work. Um, in order to do the wool and flax, you have to have a certain system. You have to have the knowledge to do that. You're going to turn wool into clothing. You're going to turn it into, um, not basically it turns it into clothes, but you turn it into something else first and then it's clothes. Flax is the same thing. She is creating the elements that people need to, to make clothing. So she provides there. So 16, she considers a field and buys it with the fruit of her hands. She plants a vineyard that's investing. All right. She's educated in the ways of how to plant this vineyard, what it needs to know. Cause she, cause it says she considers the field. So it's not that she's just buying some random piece of land. She knows what she needs to make a good vineyard, right? So she understands what she needs for her investment. Okay. So she's investing again in the future. Verse 26, she opens her mouth with wisdom and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. So she has knowledge. She has wisdom. She has these things that she needs in order to get through life. And you can't do that if you don't know anything. Education is very important in the Christian mindset. You have to be educated on how to 
run your household. You have to be educated in how things work. Any of these business things that she does, she has to be educated in business to understand how to work in that area. So it's not that she's dumb. She doesn't just sit around the house all day and do nothing. Um, she doesn't have a bunch of servants around her to do what she needs to do and they just do it for her and she does nothing. She does uh, here, she does have a couple, but it's not like they just run the whole thing. They do it all and she just says, you go do that, you go do that. No, she's in charge and she's doing it. So that's what I just wanted to go. That's what a trad wife is to me. A giver, a forward thinker or a planner. She has a good reputation because she's doing well. She is godly because she's following God's ways and that's what gives her the good reputation. She's trusted because she's trustworthy, right? So she has a good moral center. She's not lying to people. She's not saying that they can do something when they can't. She's not any of those things. She's just honest, okay? She's not hiding things, stuff like that. She's educated and an investor. So those things, those one, two, three, four, five, six things, seven things, hard worker and business owner is what a trad wife is to me. Um, a lot of these ladies that you will see a lot of times don't fit all of this, but they do fit a good portion of it. Education. If you're somebody who's a white supremacist, you're not all that educated on certain things. That's just the way that is. If you're out here, someone who is a doormat, then you probably don't have wisdom. Okay. You don't have understanding. If you're someone out here who's thinking like, well, if you're a trad wife, then you're just enslaved. No, this lady's, this lady goes around town to sell her stuff. She keeps her children with her. She's teaching her children all the time. So she's a teacher. She's an investor. She is she's on the move. You can't stop her. She's a force of nature, almost like. So that is what a trad wife is to me. What did you think when you think trad wife? This is why I think that I am because this is my list of things to do. I'm working on it. There are some things that I don't do very well, and I'm just going to be honest. I don't, but I am working on this. This is my measuring stick, if you will, to be educated, to run my own thing, to make sure my husband can always trust in me because he knows I'm going to do what we have decided to do. So that's all I wanted to come across today, guys. I know we're still looking at voting stuff. I know we're still going through all this, but hopefully by the time this video is out, something has been decided. So maybe some people have gone to jail. That would be nice, but unlikely. We'll see. We'll see. But until then, I'll see you in my next video, okay? And have a great day. Don't forget to, sorry, I have to get it on my button. Don't forget to read your Bible and pray. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.